Freshly nominated Grammy nominee. We've got a new ITL. We're happy as post Thanksgiving. Hope your Thanksgiving was good. You're at the house, Pensado's place. Man, hey everybody. Uh, good to see you. We had a couple of weeks off with Thanksgiving. I hope your Thanksgiving holidays was as good as ours. We uh, got together with Herbert and all the crews, Ann and Drew, we had a good time. Trust you guys did too. Got a great show for you today. I'll explain that in a little bit. But uh, first of all, how's my co host, Herb? Herbert. Who is that? Well, you said not to mention your last name. So. Herb, Herb Herbert. <laughs> I, did the, yeah, what... I did the CIA scramble. I gotcha. so. I'm good. How about that's, you? <laughs> that's the audible equivalent of those little pixels they put on. Pictures. You know? Ah, okay. Um, the show just took a different turn. Just, just the, for the better. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> how are you? How's your week? You know what? Pretty good. Um, got some new plugins. Got some new analog gear. Cool. You gonna talk about it a little bit later? Probably not. Okay. Cool. 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 Well, then let's get to business. <laughs> uh, as usual, you know. Hi, guys. Don't worry. It's good to be back with you. Um, Make sure you do your homework. You know it by now. You'll see it up on the screen like you're seeing now. Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook, as usual. Um, we uh, also have something very cool, like we like to do every week for you, which is this little jewel right here, the Neve 1073. See that? Look at that. Look at my Vanna White hands. Yeah. There's, there's Dave obscuring it. Great knobs. Uh, and Dave's fixation, fixation with knobs is, once again, relevant. He's going into therapy toward the end of the year for that kind of stuff. But anyways, um, so what we want to do is make sure you have a chance to enter this contest. You'll see, see underneath, you see that promo jam code right there. Enter there and make sure you get a chance to win. And who brings us that? Our family, Vintage King. Say hey, hi to Vintage King. Vintage King. We love Vintage King. Actually, uh, had a good conversation with my man Chevy this morning, so which will make no sense to you guys who are watching this on YouTube. But anyways, on Thursday morning, Chevy and I had a good chat. Um, in the chat room, as usual, is Jeff Leibovich. Say hi to Jeff. There's Jeff's page up on the screen. Jeff. We saw Jeff during Mixed Fest. He's a great guy. Yeah. Um, as always, if you're in our chat room, you know who'll be there. He's our, he's our CJ, not a DJ. And by the way, somebody asked what CJ meant, just in case, because we don't have a lawyer there. It's chat jockey. Say hello to Drew Adams. Drew. What a deal. Mm. Hey, Herb. We, yes. got, we got the man that invented the CJ spot in with us today. Oh, cool, yeah. cool, cool, Zan, cool. Zan Nakari is here. Zan, Zan absolutely. The, the originator, the legend. <laughs> He's like the Walter Cronkite of chat jockey. Stand, stand, up, stand up and take a bow, Zan. He can't see him. He, he, exactly. He, ba he bowed, trust me. So, back to you. We got a new ITL. We got stuff to get to. We got a great guest. Well, Absolutely. Why don't you do your thing? Um, I wasn't paying attention. Did you do all the homework stuff already? Dave, we're about 10 minutes before the show goes off. Okay. Guys, I, um, <laughs> I want you to, um, I, I gotta, I'm trying to plan a couple of shows ahead of time. I want you guys to um, go to Google and, and Google uh, MS technique, uh, middle side, and uh, get up to speed on that, because this, this could be a little... Um, if I just start on it, I could leave a few of you behind. So let's spend a couple of weeks, get our, our skill set up with that, and read about elliptical EQs, uh, Niveau EQs. And then uh, Sylvia Massey is coming on the show uh, next year, and Alan Myers is coming on. So kind of get up to speed on those guys for me, too. Um, ITL this week, um, I, I tried to do the impossible for you guys. What I tried to show you was how I hear the rough mix, I hear what it can be, and these are the techniques I used to, 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 to bring to fruition what I heard in my head. So let's run that, Will. Hey guys, what's up? Uh, man, it's been a minute since we did one of these, hasn't it, Will? It's been like a couple of weeks. It's good to be back with you guys. Um, what I thought I'd do today was try something that's kind of impossible to do in a one-year course at a great school, but I'm going to try to do it in 15 minutes. And that's kind of show you, uh, when you hear the rough mix, uh, I heard this particular rough mix, and, and, and I, I want it to be kind of dreamy, kind of um, have a, a um, kind of atmospheric movie kind of vibe. This is a song that uh, I worked on for Dream on his last album. Pat Thrall engineered it. Um, 
some of the some of the effects uh, I just kept Pat's effects but right now I'm gonna play it to you without any effects so you can kind of see where where my thought process was it's on it's on iTunes it's called long gone Okay, obviously that keyboard's a little whack right there, but um, that's with nothing on it. Now I'm gonna play it for you uh, with what I did. This is uh, this is kind of live. If I say I love you, you go say you love me back, but the thing about that is so far from the facts. Uh, first thing you hear is it's a lot louder. Uh, that's what I get paid to do. Uh, if I um, let's see, if I solo this, I can A B it. Okay, so how do we accomplish that? Well, first of all. It, the, the the easiest way to accomplish it is work with a great talent like Pat Thrall. <laughs> like Pat Thrall. That's, that's my number one secret right there. Um, but what I heard was the drums need to be kind of what they are. In other words, uh, I don't want to mess too much with the drums. Just kind of make them a little fatter, a little, a little cutting through. But drums are dry. Uh, I just kind of did some parallel compression. Things we've already talked about mostly. But the other thing that I heard was the uh, was there was a pad, and I thought that pad. Well, actually, the first thing that I heard when I first heard the song was uh, to use selected effects that wouldn't make Dream feel like he's back in the track, but that gave it kind of a um, kind of a vibey, um, uh, moody kind of kind of. Um, feel to it and if you listen to the lyrics they're 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 pretty aggressive so i didn't want to use reverb so uh i used a, a lot of delays pat had some delays that i kept uh used Procasti reverb i used um revive a couple of things we'll go over that in a minute so so the, the the vocal was was my number one source for adding vibe to the track secondly was that pad that you hear um it, 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 it creates a lot of mood and vibe. I'll show you what I did to that. And then there's a guitar part. Um, and then there's a part, I think it was called Phantom. So anyway, we'll go over those parts and we'll show you how, how we did it. Let's start with the vocal. I don't know how to please you. Great vocal, great recording. I was looking down and I don't know what I'm supposed So I, I, I used the D, uh, you know, DS it. And, um, and of course, a little, little tiny touch of auto tune. Um, then this EQ is something you might want to study. It's um, obviously wanted a little bit of top end, and there's some very subtle cuts. I think I did. I think I did this stuff in here, and I think Pat did. No, I think Pat did. Pat did this stuff because it looks pretty subtle. And then I did this stuff up in here. We're trying to build a sound that gives us a, a vibe. Um, here's a channel strip. And there's some automation on the channel strip. I forget what I automated. I think I automated the low end. Uh, maybe I didn't. Um, I'm thinking of a different song. Um, yeah, there's, I didn't automate this one. But anyway, you can see it's mostly just subtle little touch-ups. Touch and then uh, I tried several compressors. I tried a lot of them, and this is my favorite. Uh, I got a little gain on it. So um, uh, let's, start with, let's start with a compressor, because it'll be the hardest to hear. So here's an AB. I don't know how to please you. I don't know how to please you. For those of you that are watching every little minute detail, you notice that's, that's a lot of compression for me. But I liked it. I look at the meter and I don't want to like it. I listen to it and I like it. So we're going to keep it. 
channel strip with and without. I don't know how to please you. Everything was looking up and now it's looking down. It's hard to tell what that's doing at this point in time because it's not the main bulk of the heavy lifting. Um, this guy is pretty much the heavy lifting. I don't know how to please you. Everything was looking up and now it's looking down. I don't know how to please you. 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 So basically what we're trying to do is get enough high end to make it have emotion, but not enough high end to make it sound too pop. Okay, now um, the, the, the Massey takes off a little bit before it gets to everybody. I don't know how to please you. I don't know how to please you. You was just another fucking day. <laughs> you was just another fucking day. I control the F on the F word pretty good there. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so now let's, 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 let's bring everything in. Oh, what I'm supposed to do another day with you. Oh, what, oh, what I'm supposed to do another day with you is just another fucking day. Somebody please. Oh, what I'm supposed to do another day with you is just another fucking day. Okay. Now, well, this is going to be the last AB I do on these vocals. I don't, I don't want anybody to get kind of irritated. Oh, what I'm supposed to do Another day with you is just another fucking day Somebody please Oh, what I'm supposed to do Another day with you is just another fucking day Somebody please Oh, what I'm supposed to do Another day with you is just another fucking day Okay, now effects um, I'm going to turn them on and then I'll show you the effects themselves So here we go what I'm supposed to do another day with you is just another fucking day. Verb. Please. Oh, what I'm supposed to do another day with you is just another fucking day. Somebody, please. Oh, what I'm supposed to do. Tight delay. Another day with you is just another fucking day. Somebody, please. Oh, what I'm supposed to Quarter. do another day with you is just another fucking day. Somebody, please. Oh, what I'm supposed to. Now, the reverb I'm using is, 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 a, is a chamber, which is just, you can get that on anything. And then the setting I'm using on um, uh, the quarter note delay, this is kind of interesting. Rolling off a lot of the top end. It's really not a quarter note, it's more an eighth because the tempo is saying it's 135, which is kind of twice the actual tempo. And then a little bit of flanger on it. Um, a lot of you guys are probably asking yourselves, well, Dave, why wouldn't you use a twizzle flanger? Well, because this is kind of like the old version of the twizzle flanger. I wanted to get a little bit of that, that kind of oldie vibe. Twizzle flanger is very modern, as you know. Okay, so that's, that's the signal path there. Here's the verb. Uh, this is just a basic... Um, uh, our verb, uh, medium delay, that looks like it's a, a eighth. That's what I'm using it sometimes, it's just a basic thing I've shown you before. All right, so that, that kind of gets us going with the vocal. Now the next thing that, uh, I love this about Pro Tools 10, you can just unsolo right there. Uh, the next biggest thing was, was these pads. I, I, I wanted them to be swooshy, swirly, kind of like, um, you know, kind of pop, kind of ballady pop, but still a little aggressive. So here's what I got. biggest heavy lifter is, um, is this isotope. 
you've seen me use it on pads before. This is going to take a second. I've got this maximi the maximizer part on. Uh, I've got a little bit of top end. Compressor. And then this, this is a little widening stereo image thing. So just that alone gives me a pretty good vibe. That combined with the reverb. Hear that tail on the reverb? This is just to balance out the size. Sometimes you get tracks that are left heavy, right heavy. This is all I'm trying to do is make this a little more stereo. Then the compressor. Don't really need that because the isotope's doing the heavy lifting. There's a couple of spots in the song where it works. And then this is just to make it a little believable. There's a little digital thing in there that we tried to get out. So 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 now we're we're starting to build that vibe. We're starting to get a feeling when we listen to what we've done so far with the vocal and with the pad that that something's going on here, you know? And then the next the next thing would be this guitar is pretty important. This little guy here. I know these volume, these volume differences are going to mess with you, but I don't want to take the time to even them out right now. Just, but you know, do that, do that in your, in your, at your leisure, and you'll, you'll learn a little more. Okay, so basically nothing fancy, just a little compression. A little EQ. This is just a basic D-verb setting that just sounded better than anything else I tried. Just whatever comes up when you start D-verb up. And then this is the other track that I, I, I wanted to add a little something to. Nothing radical. <laughs> well, maybe it's radical to you. I just wanted, I don't know, you know, some of those old worm sounds out of early Dr. Dre songs, they just had that haunting quality. I felt like that makes it more haunting. And then, and then I needed a little bit of, um, a little bit of jizz. That's the uh, chamber on the bracket we're casting. Let's stop it so you can hear the tail. When last time I'm gonna play the original. Somebody please tell me what to say. Or is it okay to feel this way? Cause I don't know about us anymore. How to play you. Everything was looking up, but now it's just play a little piece of the chord. So anyway, you get the idea. Try and pick your effects. Try and take your EQs. Find moments in the track, like like the 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 uh, what was that track called? Um, the one that I kind of took all the top and bottom out of and made kind of radioy. Um, you know, find moments like that. Now you can't you can't do that in every song, but just just train your mind to start thinking. Okay, the lyrics are haunting, but they're aggressive. Uh, he's you listen to what he's saying. The track. Um, Dream and Pat did the track. Uh, the track's pretty aggressive. We don't want to mess with the aggressive parts. We want to make the drums more aggressive, but we want to get a little bit of, um, I don't know, I, I, if I had to call it something, I'd call it kind of psychedelic kind of vibe to it. Um, kind of like an old group called PM Dawn back in the day when everybody was real dry. They got this little psychedelic thing going. Uh, that was actually what was in my head. So. Anyway, hopefully that'll give you some places to start from, and don't be afraid to experiment. Don't be afraid to suck. If you, um, if you, 
if you play your stuff for everybody and they just love it, that's just a sign of mediocrity. You want, out of 10 people, you want three or four to just violently hate it. You want three or four to go, that's not bad. And then you want four or five to go, dude, you are the most incredible engineer I've ever heard. Go for it. If you screw up, just fix it, you know, but take a chance and, and, and experiment. And that's the way you grow and learn. Uh, back to you, Dave. Um. <laughs> Sorry about the F bomb. <laughs> um, you know, guys, when, when you're when you're engineering, I mean, as as you know, is like you're not listening to to the words. You're listening for sibilance. You're listening for EQ, and then then you you shift your brain around and you start listening for 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 other things. Anyway, so I hope I didn't offend anyone with that. Um, <laughs> it's like the guy who had to turn it off because he has people in the house. <laughs> that was funny. Man, I love you guys in the chat room, man. You guys made, made us laugh while we were. We were watching this. And of course, Bill Kamek, our buddy's in there today. Good to see you. Man, hope you had a good uh, Thanksgiving, Bill. Today um, is a real special day for me because, um, as you know, I, I really, really, really enjoy having guys on the show that do things that I'm just not capable of doing. And that, that way I can learn from them when they're on the show. And uh, our guest today epitomizes that. Fabian is our guest. And um, man, the cat is. Uh, is on fire. His, his, his work is, nobody can touch him right now. He, he, he did Low for Flow Rider, a great song, the 808. The kick on that is like as good as it gets. Go DJ and Lollipop for Lil Wayne. Lollipop is one, one of the great mixes of all time. And in 08, Herb, he had seven number one records just in 08 alone. Uh, Kiss, Chris Brown, on and on and on, won five Grammys. But man, welcome, my friend. Good to see you. Yeah, man, thanks for having me. Man. Cool. Okay. Cool, man. <laughs> uh, um, I'm telling you, man, it's it's it's, it's um, there's some things I do pretty well, and then I listen Something to your stuff, and I, and and I'm humbled. It's like you just, the, like 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 in the rap world, uh, a lot of emphasis is placed on. On darker, you know, kind of Wu Tang this, and but but you sneak in twenty to twenty k somehow and get away with it. I don't know I how you it. do it. I love you know what I, when I first when I first started when I first left assisting and, and started engineering, I was working with Rodney Jerkins, oh, I love and that. um and he like stole me from the Hit Factory back in the day, and um we were doing you know the Britney Spears, the Michael Jackson, all that stuff, and it was like and I was always and I was I was always a drum guy. I was you know that was my thing, but at the same time he was. It was like, man, there's something on the top. You know, he always taught me that. You know, and, and, I, and I learned that from, you know, from him. And then, and then at the time, um, you know, John Marie was mixing and Dexter was mixing all the stuff. So I would assist these guys, and it was like, um, just, you know, it was more. There's more than the bottom. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. in, in, in that world, and that's where I learned it from. Yeah. Mm. yeah but the way you do it, uh, I mean, it doesn't get any better than Dexter and uh, Jean Marie. Uh, but the way you do it, 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 it doesn't have a popness to it. It just kind of Keep slides in, in right? <laughs> yeah. it, 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 I try and sneak it in there, man. You know, it's like yeah, the integrity doesn't get sacrificed. Uh, exactly. When I notice, when I, notice uh, when I mix hip hop, sometimes if I can't get all the low end I want, I just roll off top end, and that's the same thing as getting <laughs> more go, low yeah. end. So a lot of times on those records, it's not low end that's added; it's the low ends there because they took the top, top end, end out. out. But yeah. you, you seem to be able to do both, like the kick drum on. Uh, uh, on low flow rider. I yeah. mean, that's like that was on the internet. Man. That kick drum sound has become legendary. It's like it's, <laughs> yeah, it's I, I, I think, hear it on a lot of records. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I think if Gear Sluts took a vote on the number one kick drum in the last five years, wow. it would be that. I, wow. <laughs> every week there's a discussion about that. And, wow, in my home studio, I play that mix when I'm trying to make sure I'm, I'm somewhere close in the ballpark. Wow, man, that's well, crazy. Uh, I, I know that mix took you six days. Yeah, there's it was a crazy. big story behind that mix. It was crazy. You know what it was? It had been mixed already. It was out. The record was out, but it wasn't doing well. Apparently, it wasn't taken off the way they wanted it to. And then um, Mike Karen was like, "We need to maybe try a different mix on it." You know what I'm saying? So we went in, and and it wasn't six days of mixing. It was really six days of the other engineer doing what sometimes they do. Like, oh, here, oh, I forgot to send you the snare. Sorry. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh yeah, you need those vocals. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know you would need Flo Rida's vocals on his song. You know what I'm saying? It was like one of those, you know. So, but yeah, and then, and then it was like, and then at that time there was like, you know, the producer, the E class was there, and then Flo Rida out of here, then Flo Rida's other manager, and then Mike Karen, then Craig, and then it was like, it was, we were dying, man. It was like, 
if it was one of the, if it was one of those mixes that you're like, oh my god, did we make it through this? Yeah. And then and then cool. And then it, it worked out because it was a big hit, you know. I would sure. I would just bluntly ask you what you did on that kick drum, but when you told me, I'd just feel inadequate because it's all the same gear I use, probably all <laughs> the same things I do. You just did it better. Is there some secret on that that you can share with me that's going to... Um... You know, at that time it was, to um, be honest with you, it was distressor, nuked to all shit. Excuse me, guys. Yeah. I know we cursed enough today. I'm oh, sorry. No, Excuse we, me. We covered all that. <laughs> so um, you're good. The, the distressor just, I mean, it was nuked, added back in. Um, on the on the kick itself, nuke, like the British mod. Yeah. Or, oh yeah. No, no. Well, the nuke was actually not, not oh, the British oh. mod. No, no. The nuke setting oh, okay. on, on the ratio, mm -hmm. um, with a with a with a super slow attack. So it just it would just get through the you know the initial grab would go through, and then we added that back in. And I was mixing on the Neve, the um, eighty sixty eight in Miami at the Hit Factory. So did um, you use the uh, MX forty on it? Yeah, as well the, the punch gate. Yeah, and, and that was that thing to me because I, I had not been aware of that till I started reading about you. Man, I love it. It's like. It, it basically it's a, it's a gate that opens at what frequency you tell it to open. Mm. So and I, and but, I know but, that there's other the, ones that do it. And then it, the, the first 10 milliseconds of the sound it boosts. It boosts that 6 dB when it when it when it when the gate opens at that frequency it boosts it there. Yeah yeah. So it's like. What a cool piece of gear. It's awesome, man. It's not expensive. Should we not talk channel. about it? No, let's uh, take it. It's okay, great. Yeah, come on, are you kidding me? <laughs> 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 no, I love it. that. And then you know, and transient designers. I mean, it's just. I don't know, man. People like what I do with drums. People might think it's crazy as, as much work as I put into into the drums. Is like, geez, maybe this what this person would use that many hours on a vocal. You know what I mean? Like, I just it's just it's my thing, man. You know. In, in hip hop, it is the drums. Yeah. I mean, if you don't have drums, you got an instrumental. Yeah. I mean, you got an acapella. I mean. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It's like if you lower it all the way down here, snare, vocal. Kick if you lower a hip hop record, you know. If you turn yeah. all, all, that's all you yeah. hear, you know. <laughs> but also too, I, I've said this before, and, and I, I got slammed for it. So get your cards and letters ready. <laughs> I think the hip hop audience is the most sophisticated listeners around. It's like, it's like the rap, the, the the rock guys. They couldn't tell you the difference between a Led Zeppelin snare and a My Chemical Romance snare. But yeah. but the hip hop guys, they can tell you the sound of a snare. Last week, as opposed to the new sound this let's week. Say, let's not say all hip hop guys. Let's just say there's certain hip hop guys. I'm a fan. Okay, you know? all right, yeah, okay, all right. Because yeah. I mean, like, like, I've had somebody to tell me to take the compressor off of a snare because the reverb was too loud. You know what I mean? Uh, so, you know, <laughs> so let's, let, you know. Yes, but yeah, you're talking about the let's fans. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah well, my, my point, though, is, yeah. is the hip hop fans are so sophisticated, they can, they, they, they listen more intently to the track than other, other. I'm not going to say G E N R E S of music do. Well, maybe because there's so much, because the hip hop, if you look at the top, you know, 20, top 10, there's so much hip hop there, so yeah, there's a broader range. So, yeah, so you're having a better chance of listening and finding somebody that actually pays attention to it, yeah. The ratio's in their favor. Um, I, I haven't discussed this with you, but. but I, I know you have the same problems with rough mixes that I have, and then you also have the same good things from rough mixes that we do. But I was going to—I was thinking about asking you from 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 the standpoint of a person sitting there creating the rough mix for his producer. I'm wondering if they know the importance and 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 the responsibility that they have in creating that rough mix because that rough mix that that guy only was allowed 30 minutes to do, right. poor guy. Is now become the benchmark for everything that follows, and like eighty percent of what we do yeah. Yeah. is based on that thirty-minute rough mix. Now it's 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 like explain to the explain to our guys how much responsibility that they have it's, when they create that rough mix. It's, it's crazy, man. Um, I have you know I'm, I talk to my assistant about this all the time, Gazi. We, we're talking about like these guys need to. They don't understand the responsibility that they have. They really don't because if if it if it's right or if it's wrong, I mean if it's sonically to us as a professional, if it sucks, it's still right mm -hmm. because that's what the that's what they've been hearing for a year <laughs> before maybe two years before we mix a record. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. And um, you know, years ago um, I hired uh, my, he was my assistant at the time, Javier, um, and he now works as, as T Pain's tracking engineer. And um, he when he does a rough mix, it's I tr I trained him because I was like, no, you need to. Cause, Cause, I don't want to deal with this anymore. You know what I'm saying? And T Pain does a lot of records. He produces a lot of records, and and it's like I can't deal with this no more. I need you, Javier, to, to I need you to do a real mix on a rough mix, man, because it's so important down the road. Because now all I'm going to try and do is match what you did and enhance it, 
in an A&R's mind, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But um, y you need to deliver it at a, at, a, at a high level because because I only want to bring it to a higher level. So mm -hmm. don't screw me. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and it's crazy. It's, it's, it's crazy. Uh, yeah, it, it, it really is a responsibility that, that a lot of the, 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 the younger engineers that are coming up don't understand don't. How, how important it is. And, and, and two guys, uh, just, just think of this. The more time you spend and get a great rough mix, the more likelihood that'll be the record. You know, so yeah. so so it, it's important. There's a lot of people that get their start that way. And I like that, man. You're supposed to. It's like, come yeah. on, it keeps us all going. It's like, yeah. when we we you know, we, I like the energy, man. It's like, bring it on. Like, don't don't give it half ass. Just do, you know, do right. your thing, man. Right. Get in there. You know, yeah. it's like, and they all have the same tools. We all got the same tools. Yeah. Go come and do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When I was uh, back in Atlanta, back in the day when I was working with Cameo. Uh, they would give me 15 minutes to do a rough mix. Oh. Then they'd go to New York, spend three days, get the greatest guys in the world, Try come back and play me the rough mi their mix and play my run. Say, this is why I don't let you mix because you ain't shit, man. L listen to this. I'm like, I know, but I did this with a studio with no gear right. in five minutes. Pre Pro Tools. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and and I, you're comparing it to something Alan Meyerson did, uh, you know, in New York. Over three days, whatever. Uh, it's it like is. that's not fair. <laughs> but you know what? At some point, you go, well, if that's my that's my lot in life. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I got better. Yeah, sure. I, I never got to where I could beat the other guys, but I got pretty damn close. <laughs> but what I would do is, I'd, 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 the minute I went into that room, I'd be mixing. So yeah. I, I was mix, instead of having 15 minutes to mix, I was always in mix mode when I was tracking. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and so by the end of the day, I already had the mix done. Well, you know what, just to touch on that one more, I know we got, but um, oh, well, we've been talking this is about, your show, dude. we've been talking about, my assistant guys, we've been talking, I was like, damn, you know what, the stuff that's been coming to me lately is horrendous. It's just awful. And I'm not blasting anybody personally or per se or, or mm -hmm. any specific thing, but it, it's just getting, and it seems to be getting worse and worse. And, 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 I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, like, geez, my technology keeps getting better and making my job easier. So how is it coming to me worse? What's, what's going on, right? Well, the main thing's going on is they're not watching Pensada's place. Well, probably I would say that. So one tip I would say is, listen, if it sounds distorted, guys, <laughs> if it sounds distorted, it's distorted. Right. <laughs> I mean, I, there's nothing else I can tell you. Five years at full sale. That's hey, what you walk listen, away with. <laughs> if it sounds distorted, it's distorted. People don't know this for some reason. I don't understand. <laughs> no, but, I, but, but, but we were sitting, I was like, geez, you know what? Maybe I need to go back to tracking. Maybe I can't just exclusively mix because maybe I need to go and choose projects that I want to work on, mm -hmm. record them, and then mix them. Mm -hmm. Because you know what, the money doesn't make sense, but at the same time, it's like I'm, I'm getting it's torture. It's yeah. torture. Mm -hmm. So, like five out of six days of the week, we deal with this. You know where what I mean? That, where have you heard that before, Drew? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's it, man. That's no, but it's, it's an important point. I hear it from the business standpoint from him. Mm -hmm. Just the the torture and the time involved in yeah. getting something right to mix oh, yeah. and getting it to that level that has an economic impact. I tell the labels because they're they're like, Fabian, hey, how how are you canceling the studio today? They're still going to charge us. I'm like, well, how are you sending me files like that? Right. You know what? The money that you wasted today by by, uh, by canceling this day in the studio, maybe you should have hired a real engineer to record this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And and then and then we then I could actually mix this because right. because we we cancel a lot of days, man, and we just fill it in with another slot. It's it's just it and it happens. It's funny you brought this up because this happens to me almost every day. All the time. It's crazy. It happens a lot. And, yeah. and just, just uh, I know Fabian extremely well, and, 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 and we're not being critical about anybody's skill level because, like Fabian and I are the first to say, we don't know what you're going through. You, 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 you might have had five seconds to do the mix. You might, it might not have even been a rough mix that you did, or the, the, the tracking was under horrible circumstances. I, I've, I've, Fabian and I have both been in situations where we had to let something go on a record that, that we didn't like, but the producer's like, you got to move on. Let's go, let's move, let's go, let's go. Mm -hmm. the vocalist is leaving in five minutes. Keep it. We, we have no choice, you know. But, but uh, use that as inspiration because the guys that can solve that problem will be the new guys at Fabian's level in three or four or five years. So, so, so it's not a criticism. It's, it's a suggestion to help you take your skills to another level. And uh, the Bible says a laborer is worthy of his hire. The reason you're not making shit for a living right now is because you don't have anything to sell that's worth anything. Get your skills together and get some value, and then your income will follow. And one of the ways to do that is do what Fabian's talking about. And people respect you, too. Like, don't be scared. If it's wrong, tell the guy. Don't be scared of it. You know, like, people yeah. are scared of these guys, man. You're in there with the artists. That's that New York thing. I, I mean, I, I never, I wasn't I good at that. No, but it's like, you got, what are you scared of? Like, it's distorted. All right, hey, man, let's take it again. Mm. You know what I mean? I get the stuff. Well, he wanted it. No, man, listen, it's wrong. 
Wayne, 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 it's wrong. We need to re-record it. Did you, you know really what I'm saying? Have, did you really have a T-shirt made that said, oh, if you, if you like the mix so fucking much, why don't you use if it? You on love, the, if you love the rough mix, use the fucking rough mix. I used to walk around <laughs> with a set of manager. And it's like, use it. Great. You know, that's, you know, you guys got it figured out. It's great. Oh, man. I love it. Man, you know. Is, is there a possibility we could... Put that on the, our website. We need that. We'll, yeah, give, we you, we'll give you. We'll, we'll give you. We need that. Yeah. We need that, man. I used to walk around with that T-shirt, man. Everybody would That's crack fantastic. it up. Yeah. I was I, for some reason I always think the guys that come out of New York are just smarter, better than than us. But you, they are clearer. clearer. They're clearer. I, I wish I, I, wish I had clearer. that. Clearer. Not smarter. Yeah, not better. smarter. That's clearer. Clear. Yeah. No a more to the point. A to B is a lot quicker. Absolutely. Back in the day. You know, back in the early 2000s, you were you like everybody. You know, we 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 thought that that the world had to be mixed on a console, blah 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 blah. And then then as the tools have evolved and gotten better, uh, we, we've realized that we can't do everything that we could do in the analog world. But what we miss from from the analog world, we can kind of make up for it by other things sure. uh, are you comfortable in the box now more or i am really i've been i've switched i would say about this last year i i, we, I, want, I don't want to say hybrid because that's so cliche you know what i'm saying but it's kind of like when i'm in the big studios like record plan or hit mm -hmm. factor whatever you look across the board all the, it's almost a summing game with, with a little mm -hmm. bit of eq added you know what i mean so um mm -hmm. i just now I'm, I'm building my own place it's almost done um and yeah, I'm, i got i got a couple of summing mixers really nice you know boutique type of stuff you know what i mean but mm -hmm. yeah and I don't think I could do it totally in the box. I know there's guys that do it, and mm -hmm. I hear, like, Phil Tan, like, I hear his stuff, and it's like, oh, my God. You know what I'm saying? How does this guy do it? You know I what I mean? But Phil lies. I don't think he's telling the truth. Yeah, I think if, yeah, we broke into be, his, right? if we broke into his studio, <laughs> yeah. I think you know we'd what? find an SSL you know, under you know, a Phil, tarp. Phil, we're coming to Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to figure this out, man. No, because, no, but, but now, yeah, now I, I'm at the point, and I've challenged myself um, over the past year to really be like, you know what? I know where this is going. These people can't afford to keep me in these big studios. They can't. The labels can't. Um, and it's, so there's things that I want to work on that I can't work on because they can't afford. They can afford me. They can't afford the studio. So that's why I've had to go to this. And you know what? I don't want a studio that I have to maintain and I have to put this big console and I have to do all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've challenged myself to do it. And yeah, now I'm here. Yeah. And the, so the past couple of projects I've mixed have been in that in that mm -hmm. summing situation. You know what I mean? So it's more. Yeah, I, I, would, I won't say in the box. Not 100 in the box. But yeah, there. I understand. Yeah. I'm kind of doing. I'm kind of doing something similar. It just. Um, one of the things, I'm not trying to give you advice, but one of the things you're going to learn is, uh, and Phil kind of helped me with this, um, you're sitting there and you're thinking, man, I got all the time in the world to do this, and your mixes just start getting worse and worse and worse, and then finally you just have to go, you, like Herbert's on me about this as we speak, at some point after a day you got to stop. Because right. the mix doesn't get better, right, yeah. it just gets longer yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, you yeah. just ruin more stuff. And I go this way, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. The mix is done, yeah. But, um, um, explain something to me, because I, I, as a lot of people know that watch the show regularly, I'm, I'm always curious about compression and stuff. And like, I know you love the distressors. Mm -hmm. um, what is it about the distressor? Can you describe what is it about the distressor that you can't get in the in the plug-in world that you that, that you still find mm -hmm. useful? I'll be honest with you. Um, if we would have had a conversation, like I just said, I've been challenging myself. Mm -hmm. If we would have the conversation a year ago, it's different. My, my approach is totally different now. I'm not a distressor guy, per se, anymore, like I was. I, every once in a while, I'll pull them out when I need to, need to. But that Transex plug-in... I'm not sure I want to hear that. Oh, man. <laughs> That's yeah. disappointing, isn't no, it? No, the tra I mean, because I was. I, I, they would, they, I had a rack of distressors, and everybody, they, they knew, no matter what, if you talk to Fabian, you're gonna hear distressor. You know what I'm saying? Now it's it. I, I love the Transex plugin, man. It's awesome. You know, it, it gives me that same. Waves. Give, yeah, it gives me that same thing. And then the UAD stuff. They, you know, they got the Fatso plugin. Yeah. I, I could do what I do with that, or I, or even the um the SPL stuff that they had. The, you know, the transient designer, but mm -hmm. from the UAD. Mm -hmm. Awesome, man. Like I, I find myself. Like I'm, I'm looking at the distressor, and he, you know, he's giving me the look like my ex-girlfriend. Like, hey, what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, let you see me over here. You know, like, how have you moved on from me? You know? There's a there's a plug in. I, I I'm happily married, by the way. So, uh, I didn't mean it like that. There's a plug in. Uh, you might want to repeat that. You know, on this show, we 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 actually we actually provide marriage counseling, and we actually try to provide enhancement to the marriage relationship. Because as engineers, we all know the problems that we. She loves it when I leave. Man. Like, I don't know. Maybe she loves it too much. I don't know. <laughs> Um, um, remind me, remind me to, to hip you to uh, Kush Audio just made a plug-in 
of their um, fat so that they turned into a distressor kind uh -huh. of. This is, is they turned. Oh, I need to check that out. It's, right? it's, 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 yeah, yeah, it's, all right. It's, I need to check that out. Hey, let me just say this for all of our audience who are thinking about becoming assistants. You didn't get Kush audio out of your mouth before Ghazi grabbed his thing, put that information yeah. in, which is which is Fabian's assistant, and has got that locked and loaded. So well, that's, why, that's why Ghazi's where Ghazi is. I might is, put man. Ghazi on camera before the show's over. Uh, if we got Ghazi's two cameras, if we got two cameras, we can put a camera on my guy Drew, and my yeah. guy Drew will clean his guy's clock. Uh -oh. well, Drew already has a camera, so we, we've already. I you know, tease. Get, get on the park like hey, I tease Drew. I tease Drew mercilessly, but Drew can clean any assistance clock. <laughs> any assistance clock. Sounds like a UFC uh -oh, battle. I think it's In the octagon. Like studio it. one, studio two, any assistance no clock. No disrespect to my guy, you know, but Kazi, go ahead, man. Handle that guy. It was like a cage match. Look, <laughs> no, no, I was joking. I know. <laughs> Good. Meet in the console. <laughs> hey, Fabe. Um, I know there was a time when you were you were printing back to tape, and 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 uh, I, I know I know now you're 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 finding other solutions for that, yeah. which which obviously I still miss sometimes. Of course, yeah. But but now we've got tools like uh, Phoenix plugins, and then and then one of your favorites, the Analog Channel by yeah. DSP. Have you found? Are you still using the Analog Channel by DSP a yeah, lot? Yeah, I am. Yep, yeah. um, I use it vocals religiously you know what i mean sometimes i'll print up i'll have like a drum bus with it you know um just like a saturation type of you know and then um uad now with the with i don't think it was the latest update the one before that there was like an ampex 102 yeah, yeah so cool 102. man yeah. it's so cool and then you could turn the you could even turn the noise off if you I want know. you know what i mean it's like hello you know it's like i, I love <laughs> i love the i love theirs and i love the mpx by waves yeah it's cool I, too. I use the mpx by waves as as a equalizer sure. like, like instead of adding top end to a hi-hat i'll just put that plug in on and <laughs> the Bias. The high yeah. end, yeah. The high end from 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 that seems to it'll be the same, but for some reason it's not harsh. It's, it's, I, mm. I don't I'm trying to figure that one out. Um, a long time ago, uh, uh, and the only reason I'm bringing this up is because we all struggle through this. You mentioned that you were going through kind of like a, a, and if you're uncomfortable talking about this, we'll skip it. But but. We work so much and so long and, and so hard. Sometimes we, sometimes we, we emotionally, we'll go through some peaks and valleys, especially after three months of no sleep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the world looks a little different. But at that time, you were, you were, you were, in your own mind, I, I felt like you were struggling with a technician versus the creative part yeah. of your mind. How, yeah, how, was. Not, not to say anything negative about you, because you, you still had a trillion number one records. So, yeah, no. but in terms of like. A young cat starting out, can you give them some advice on how you, how you reconciled all yeah, of that? I mean, I mean to, 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 to talk about it, like, I, there was a point where I, I wouldn't even hear the song. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was peaks and valleys. I was ones and zeros. I was like, I was a straight digital machine, man. I was coming mm -hmm. in, all right, the kick drum got to fit here, this and that. And they'd be like, what do you think of the song? I didn't hear the song. I have just no idea. Just be fair, he, he's, he was more than that. But that's <laughs> no, no, but I mean, no, but it's just, realistically, that's why I felt in my mind. I was depressed, and it was the same shit every day, and it was just over and over. And, I was, and it was like, and, it, and I was just overwhelmed, and it, and it was... To me, it was boring, and, and, and with boring, you could hear. You could hear when I actually liked the record versus when I didn't, and I didn't like that about me. So I, I took off for a minute. I, I relaxed. I chilled. I, I took a vacation with my wife. We, we went and hung out, and I, and I had to fall back in love with music again. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it, was, it wasn't easy to do. It was, very, it was hard to do. But, but um, advice to some kids, say, work on what you like. Don't, don't think about money. Work on what you want to work on. Um, mm -hmm. You know, find, and that, that's another reason why I'm building my studio, so I can work on products that I want to work mm -hmm. on. That, that you know they can't afford it. Well, that's fine. I, it's not about money. Let's 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 live and grow. You know. I think too little attention is paid to what you what you pose and what you're talking about mm -hmm. because because and particularly in the engineering space, people think that's about about being Superman. Yeah. Just stay as long as you need to. Do yeah. it till you die. Go ten days. Yeah. And when people get altered emotionally and physically, yeah. it changes your ability to mix well. Well, what doesn't make sense is you take a studio like Larrabee, this me, Jason, and Manny. Um, and a kid gets out of um, AI or one of the schools, and this kid is a heavy metal, hard rock rocker, and he, and he tries his best to get a job at Larrabee. His career path is going to be different, because mm -hmm. and, and, you're not going to you're going to end up finding yourself working in a lot of pop, a lot of a lot of hip hop, a lot of. R and B, and then you go, you, you you get good as an assistant. Next thing you know, Rodney Jerkins is snagging you as his assistant engineer. Now you got 
six years into a musical form you don't like. And, right. and, and what you didn't bring up is the scarring that happens from the fashion change. When you have to wear your pants low, oh, yeah, whole <laughs> I mean, thing, it, it'll just completely miss you. And you know, while we're talking about fashion, my man Herb got that flyest collection of polo, polo. shirts, man. Polo. You know, man, like, I, I, I got polo envy. I got polo envy every so time, man. Called me and said, you're going to like Fabian. You're absolutely right. So, so you know what? I got polo Tip envy, wood, man. man. Tip and Barry's Boxwood. Fabian, Fabian is, uh, I was Fantastic. walking to the record plant one day, and I was working with Pharrell, and, I was just so depressed. I wasn't happy with what I was doing, and I was boxed in a corner. I walked into his room, and he just made me feel like a million bucks. Oh, come on, it's Michael Jordan sitting at the table. Thank you. <laughs> 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 you ready to fire somebody? No. Okay. The, well, the process. Just rolled, the, so, the, 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 so just know that. The pro Give me one minute. Okay. Because I'm real curious about this. Um. Um. Help, help me out, chat room. Tell them. Give me a second. We all have different ways with different songs, different times, different moods, the way we start into a mix. You know what I'm saying? It's like, like, like you've got multiple ways of starting. Sometimes you might start with the vocals or the drums or just, uh, sometimes I'll just pick the hardest thing and get it out of the way. And then usually for me, the hardest things are vocals. Um, at one point in time, you had a neat, really enviable technique that I stole for a while where you would just take the, the instrumental that the vocals were tracked to, mm -hmm. play that, work on the vocal, get the hardest thing out of the way first. Yeah. I thought that was genius. Are, yeah. are you still doing something like here, that? Here and there. It depends on the record, man. You know, to be honest with you, um, a lot of times, I mean, yes, it's kind of like a 50-50. You know, like when I can, yeah, I love to work that way because I'm fresh, you know, I do my thing. And, the, and then, and be honest with you, the drums and the musical aspect of it is like, you know, I mean, you do it in your sleep, certain mm -hmm. aspects, the things you don't even have to think about anymore. So that, yeah. so, so I like to start on the things that are difficult for me, mm -hmm. being vocals, you know what I mean, being the elements yeah. that share the vocal range, and, you and know? Going back full circle, one of the reasons the vocals are so hard is that requires the most skill from the guy that did it, and a lot of times they haven't had experience. It's <laughs> like, not hello, the, and it goes yeah. back to the beginning of our conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's like, exactly. You know, and it's like, you know, what's a good mix? Well, what did we start with, you know? <laughs> uh, for example, on, um, on, um, on low, what did you start with on that? On that record, I'm trying to remember. It's been a while, man. I feel like we did. I feel like on that one we started with uh, 808s, and it was. It was. I think I'm pretty sure. I don't remember though, man. It's been. That's a. That's a long time ago. Last question, Herb. Uh, in general, it seemed like 10 years ago the 808s we were getting sonically, we had to do something with. It seems like now the 808s we get. I just turn them up. I do yeah. very little to 808s anymore. Are you finding that Same trend thing. happening? You know, every kick drum I've mixed, every kick drum you've mixed, every snare drum, every every 808, everything, they're all recycled. They've been mixed, mastered, yeah. mixed, mastered, mixed, mastered, sampled, yeah. sampled, sampled. So you know what? If we're real, just a lot of time up. it's kind of like, all right, let's. Oh, it's done. How great is that? You know? Yeah. <laughs> I've mixed oh, or oh. Oh, this is my kick drum. They just sampled it wrong. Here, let me replace it with the one I have it. I have the kick drum. You know what I'm saying? They just sampled it wrong. Here it is. You know what I'm saying? That's great. I don't do that on, uh, you know, sorry guys. I know Polo for all those guys. I don't replace your drums. It was a joke. <laughs> so let's get in the batter's box, sir. We're running out of time. I'm ready. All right. Just, so they, just an aside, if you replace a polo kick drum with a Pharrell kick drum, the, the computer will actually catch fire. Oh, yeah, no, I've heard that. I've yeah, seen that. Yeah, it's just something we I haven't know. seen it because I haven't done that, right. yeah. per se. I've heard, you know, yeah. yeah I've, I've heard of that happen. <laughs> All right. Are you ready for batter's box? I guess so. Yeah. I got a feeling doing? this is going to be the best batter's box ever. Um, I, I, I'm going to give you the option of telling me a plug-in an, or an analog piece of gear. That, that's your two choices. All right. Plug-in, analog piece of gear. Lead well, button. A specific plug-in or just say plug-in versus analog gear? Specific. Okay, okay, I got you. All right. Um, lead vocals. Uh, analog uh, Dolby 740. Really? Can't, can't live without it. Yeah. Wow, 740. Yeah. Write that down, Drew. <laughs> Background vocals. Same thing. Okay. So, or 33609 I use, but, but the digital one, the UAD. Oh, okay. version, yeah. I like that too. Acoustic guitars. Um, man, Chris Lord Algae, the this his suite, not not the not the the compressor bundle, the his actual artist series. Mm -hmm. All day, man. It's like he figured it out, man. He 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 gave it away. Be truthful. <laughs> How many acoustic guitars have you engineered on in the last year? 
Quite a bit, man. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, quite a bit, actually. Okay, I apologize for that horrible That's Had a Love, Wayne's the Had a Love, had acoustic going the whole Oh, you know? that's yeah. right. Yeah, that's that, was, right. that was a big one recently, but yeah, a lot of them, actually. Uh, Rhodes, pianos. Um, I, love, I love Fatso on that, man. Damn, write that down, too, Drew. I knew this was going to be a good one. <laughs> it's a good thing I'm working after this. Uh, electric guitar. <laughs> Man, Chris Lodazzi, man, he just saved my life. You don't even understand, man. He makes it so easy. I feel like I'm cheating. Mm. Uh, stereo bus. I don't. I don't. Go ahead, shoot me. I don't. I don't. I don't put any. I I I'll put a GML across the stereo bus, but as far as compression, none. Cool. Um, I like that. Synth bass. Um, I love lo-fi plugin. So cool. How do you use that? Um, I, I add you, some, like, you move the saturation to yeah, get the better. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, like that. Um, or you know, even the Fatso too. The Fatso, the UAD plugin is good for the synth bass too. But lo-fi gets you know gives mm -hmm. it that little something that's missing. Uh, kick drums. Oh man, we can go crazy on that. How long we got? <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, just what comes to your mind first? Uh, Poltec, oh, but the UAD, the UAD um, EQ, um, the Poltec, uh, the software version of the UAD, yeah, the Poltec. Yeah. Poltec. Yeah. What, uh, why do you prefer that over the waves? Man, they, they're going to kill me. I, I don't know. I'll be honest with you, I've, I've done shootouts personally, and it's just something with the UAD, just is, it, it, the phasing is better to me. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I use the waves on every mix, so we'll balance that out. All right. <laughs> um, snare. Um, it's transient designer. Cool. What about the MX-40? It's there. They, they, they just go checking. together. I'm wondering if I should buy one or not. I'm they just ahead, checking you, to uh, make put sure. It this way. You definitely should buy one. Okay. <laughs> um, strings. Um, man, I love GML is always good with the strings. Yeah. It, you know, it gives it that air, you know, move, move them out of the way. Uh, pads, like, like, like the, the, the buzzy kind of pads that the, the, the man, listen, Euro dance guys are when using. I'm, when I'm cheating, Chris Lord Algae got an unplugged thing on his suite he's just a, I, I, it's cheating i'll tell you that the, they got it waves and crystal allergy that bundle I, I don't know man they, they they saved me two hours a day wow. when they made that bundle man. <laughs> wow chris worked forever on that stuff i mean it's yeah, really it shows. really it shows, man. really good yeah, they, they, they they saved my life with that um make me sound like i know what i'm doing <clears throat> um on, on, on occasions you get live drums. What, what do you? How do you like to approach those? Do you on the on the, the room mics and the overheads? What what would you? I try use? to find what they, what they sampled the MIDI from. <laughs> 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 on the room, no, on the room mics, I like to, I, I I'll beat them up with the you know, I'll, I'll distress put the stresses on them and just squash the crap out of them. You know what I mean? And them back in. Um, a lot of you know a lot of when when I when I do live drums, you, you'll see a rack of distresses going off in the room. You know that's that's. That's when I go back to those. A lot yeah. of people don't know this. About, oh, we're done, but a lot of people don't know this about you. But the, you, you, your skill level is everything. I mean, because when you come up the way you came up, yeah, you, I mean, you're was, not just working on hip hop. He's working on. Yeah, you had to I was at a lucky on. time, man. It was a great time. You know, mm, yeah. late '90s was was awesome time in New York. You know, music was cool. You know, the studios were cool. Absolutely. So yeah. I, 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 have I got a, a time for one more question? Yep. Yeah, then we've got two from Drew after that. Okay. The the. The, the balls it must have taken to, to, to leave the comfort of your little nest in New York, mm -hmm. you had pop credibility, you punted all of that and went down to Miami where there was no nothing at that time. Yeah. And then it was a good move because there's a little bit going on down there, you know? Yeah, and, it, it and, ended and, up being and, good. <laughs> but, but Were you ahead of the trend? You know what I saw? He it started at, the trend. I saw it as an open market. To be honest with you, I mean, because mm. I, I looked at it, my friends are my friends had done things that weren't uh, per se on a straight line. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I would and I learned I had that mentality, mm -hmm. um, and I would see they, they would see an opening and they would exploit it. Mm -hmm. And and I and I saw an opening down there, and I was like, you know what? Let's what go. go for it. What am I gonna lose? Okay. And you know what? It's a hell of a lot cheaper than New York to begin with. So yeah. let's just go. But and you already were fairly successful. You'd already been working with Rodney. You'd yeah, already I mean, had it was a just, lot of. But it, you took that shot. Yeah, it was just a time. It was just a time to go, man. It was beautiful, and, and it wasn't dissing anybody that was down there. But it was just like open season, man. There wasn't a lot. There wasn't a lot going on, technical wise, that, that that can compete with the skills that I had in New York. So I went down there with this whole attitude, and I didn't do it by undercutting. I went down there and charged more than they charged. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, mm -hmm. I, and I just gave them that, 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 that whole attitude, man. You, the, know? you started at Hit Factory in New York, mm -hmm. and then you went to Hit Factory in Miami. Did yeah. that kind of 
ease the, the no, fear no, a little bit? No, it was bit? crazy because they hated me down there. You know, it was, it, it, Hip Factory New York, Hip Factory were two different worlds. It, was, it might as well have been, you know, East and West, you know, the Berlin Wall. But it, it, was, it was separated like, it was crazy, man. But, but I went down there and they hated me because I was a New York guy. They thought I was a rat. They thought I was, you know, coming to check on them from the New York people, uh, this and that. Uh, I was just going down there because I was like, man, let's go. Man. This, you know, was, this is too was, easy. What was your, the, the first... What was the first time, and who was the artist that went, when you said, you know what, this was a good move? Man, I'll tell you. How uh, long did that take? Jeez, I gotta, that's a good question, man. I mean, the Marlies were running around down there. It was cool. Um, it took about a year, man, before it really settled in. You know, but, because, but it, wasn't, it wasn't so much a Miami thing. It, it, it's, going down there, for me, was, it made Miami a destination. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't so much a Miami-based people. It was a destination for recording. So, so then, then it made, then, then it had, then I had the power of, 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 uh, of the a conglomerate feeling where the people would come and they could be, because Miami was kind of like a, they didn't have that, that technical push, you right. know what I'm saying? So, so then people could come from New York, from LA, from everywhere. Booty, booty music. Yeah, yeah exactly. And Drew, and tee us up. Okay. Cool. Um, quick question from uh, Jeremy Levy Anderson from Fabian. What is one thing that you've learned in recent years that you wish you knew or comprehended earlier in your career? Buy my own studio. Buying your own studio? That's it, man. You know, I wish I would have did that years ago. Yeah. Get up for me, too. Uh, another question from Mr. Boyland. Uh, wants to know if you use middle side and what you may use it on. Middle side, like a stereo enhancer, like the, like the PSP thing we were looking at last night? No. Nothing like that? We're, we're, we're about to do a couple of weeks on that because uh, it's a mastering technique that, that has a lot of value in the in our world cool all right from uh from upcountry studios fabian would you ever consider working with the metal band that is signed and step outside the your box yeah man check it, you would kill, kill, kill a metal band we got corn we got a, i don't know how metal they are but yeah man you know what um yeah heck yeah i mean come on <laughs> find my website man hit me up let's do it man 100 percent. now's the time Absolutely. he would kill it <laughs> so here's the other question Compared to a visit to the dentist, how was this? <laughs> yeah, One of the best days of my life, man. Thank you, man. I made it. I made it, man. I made it, Mom. <laughs> man, thanks so much for coming. Thank man. you for having me. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. I know you had to make some sacrifices to be here, and I really no, no, appreciate no, no, it. It's an honor. Thank Gazi, you. are we cool? I Say it out loud. <laughs> All right, cool, cool. Got, we got, got, got to give Gazi some love. Uh, before we get out of here and Dave takes us home, remember our giveaway, which will happen December 15th. Here's the 1073 by Neve. There it is. See the promo jam code underneath there? Make sure you enter. We want to get that to you for Christmas. Um, been a good week. Great guest. Oh, uh, man. Great things coming, which we will talk about in the future. And Dave, wrap it up. And let's go. Well, guys, um, we're back in, the, back in the saddle, so we'll see you next week. I know there's been some confusion about are we live? Are we on? We're, we're, we're live. We're on. We're going to be on for a while. Uh, Fabian has assured us he's going to come back, kind of let us keep track of what he's been doing and what he's going to be doing. And uh, got some great guests coming up. And um, this is a great time of year, getting the holiday spirit. Um, see you next week. <laughs>